new from Vinegar Syndrome 1998 release, Bio Zombie, a Hong Kong kind of splatter movie, a low budget zombie movie that just takes a group of people and the location and lets carnage unfold. And it's one of those kind of wonderfully simple devices that offers up so many possibilities as we have here. We have a group of characters led by uh, Woody Invincible and uh, Crazy B, two guys that are incredibly annoying. They are the kind of worst kind of people, but they're engaging, they're fun to watch and they are, uh, the, the way they try to big up everything they do is incredibly funny and I actually came to love the sort of friendship that came between these two people. Within a shopping mall, we get to meet other people that work there, as well as our two heroes of sorts. We get to meet uh, Rose and Jelly. Uh, we get to meet a couple of other people that own a phone shop, a, a husband and wife. We get a sushi guy, we get a security guy, and we get an infected zombie person who's going to cause the carnage in this one. And it all kind of starts because there is some kind of covert government operation going on where this guy has bought something that turns people into zombies on his way out of a, a facility. He gets knocked over by our two heroes, is given the, the substance that turns them into zombifications. And then because these two guys are inept heroes, the only thing they can do is to throw this guy into the boot of the car and kind of leave him there at the mall. Of course, he's going to escape. Carnage will happen. <laughs> what I loved most about this one was the relationships and the characters. And this is the key to a kind of low budget horror movie um, is to have these characters that you really well, like watching. You may not. Uh, like them personally but they're fun to spend time with even the antagonistic husband of the phone shop uh, pairing he is just awful uh, aggressive and can't really back it up but you know what it's fun to have that kind of antagonistic character in amongst this group of people that constantly makes every situation much worse it's like my cue, uh, Watching our heroes slowly try to get the girls, slowly try to make money to understand their situation, to realise what's happening and figure a way out of it is incredibly fun. To see additional characters turn up that just make the situations much more murkier than they should be is incredibly fun. <laughs> When we get to the gore and the blood and the guts, it's interesting. It's silly, yes, it's tongue in cheek, it's definitely played for gory fun, but it delivers on that and what more do you want? When you're watching one of these zombie movies, you want to see someone ram a pole into someone's head, turn a tap and the blood to flow out. It's cool to see, you want that, you want to see our heroes whipping up and start to take the fight to the zombies in the most brutal, bloody and over the top fashion that you can think of and they do that. But all the while in doing that they have given us characters that I genuinely cared about, that I wanted to see get to the end of the film and beyond and kind of some do and a lot end up uh, as food. There are so many funny sequences within this that are just kind of quirky, oh, that's odd funny, to laugh out loud hilarious. One of my favourite moments is the sushi uh, chef who is turned into a zombie but still has uh, the kind of hots for one of the girls and is protecting her. 
uh, and he makes up sushi for the, the zombies, which is all little bits of rice with somebody's finger across the top of it. Pointless, but kind of funny and clever. It <laughs> I had a lot of time for Biozombie, primarily because of the characters. I loved them. They were fantastic. It was great to spend time with them. It was great to see them somewhat evolve. It was great to have their little um, interactions with other people uh, continue to reciprocate throughout the film, but change uh, the kind of dynamics between the group. I was entertained by Biozombie. Is it the greatest movie? No. It feels a little derivative of the subject matter, things we've seen before. It has a contained situation and a limited number of actors, so you feel it's a little bit low budget, but they deliver in the gore. And you know what? It's a hell of a lot of fun. And for that, that's that's sometimes just enough for me. So here we are in the disc for Biozombie and the audio setup setup. We have a commentary track with film historian Frank Jing. One of the busiest guys in commentaries, which is fine because he is excellent. In the extras, we have an interview with co-writer director Wilson Eep. Um, this is a really interesting talking head. Twenty years after the fact, looking back at the movie, uh, talking about the production. There's a nice little introduction, talking about what he wanted to do, how it was the first zombie movie in Hong Kong. Then we have video games, contaminated Lucasade and human sushi, a video essay by film historian Chris O'Neill, which is 12 minutes 37 seconds. A little bit stilted, but it has some nice information uh, in amongst it. Uh, we have the alternate ending of Biozombie, which although it's 3 minutes 17 seconds in length, uh, the, the ending is only maybe 10, 20 seconds that's different from uh, the release. Biozombie, yeah, it's fun. It's fun to pick up. This super bright cover as well alludes to some of the over-the-top silliness that the film has and this was a, a great amount of fun uh, within this one. I would love to know your opinion on Biozombie, whether you loved it, hated it, felt somewhere in the middle. Would you like to see more titles like this from VS? Let me know in the comment box below. While you're down there, hit this video with a like because it really helps the channel. There are more videos up here if you want to see more of my stuff. And in the description box below are links to the Patreon membership program, manvfilm.com, always in which you can support me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Man V Film.